Hello, fashion friends and family. This is Stacy here from So Bromo, Elsa Fitzgerald, and I should start saying the Maryland Institute College of Art. Um, I am actually on my lunch break from Micah. We are in the Senov Lab here at the Baltimore Innovation Center, which is on the third floor of the building, but I'm on the fourth floor where So Bromo is based. Um, I'm gonna walk over and go see Ibu Nuri, um, who's the master kabaya maker who's setting up her studio. Down there, you have all the different needle trade organizations. Here's So Bromo. We have some boxes coming coming in for some filming that we will be doing. Freight elevator. Um, and then we have a few different artist studios that are coming together. But down this way, you will have Ibu Nuri from the Art of the Kabaya, Maryland. She's still setting up, freshening up. bringing her plants in and this is some of her imagery from Maryland tradition. This is going to be not our normal Art of the Kabaya Maryland video because we're just doing behind the scenes but hello Ibu Nuri! Hi Stacy. What are you working on over here? Oh I like to, um, working on um, put the stuff on the place, uh, rearranging the studio for the 1st of May, when my class begin. So, um, some of you may have been following the Art of the Kabaya Maryland with Ibu Nuri and I. Um, that's a mix between English and Bahasa Indonesia. Um, but that is a master um, and a learner um, program through the Maryland State Arts Council. So Ibu Nuri has been awarded another um, cycle through with um, a learner who's Mr. Hardy. You met him in some of our earlier videos. Speaking of Mr. Hardy, um, Ibu Nuri's son, James, is graduating from university and would like a custom-made um, jacket, you said? Yes, custom-made jacket, like sport jacket. It's not, uh, not, uh, not formal jacket. What fabric is this? This is a cotton batik stem, and then there is um, the crease. And that's a sword, like a sword? Yeah. Like a, not a dagger or a sword? Sword, sword, yeah, sword. So this part over here will be on the back. And then this will be in the center on the front because another one is, the other side will be connecting with that. It will be put a zipper on. And what's the symbolism around this dagger for, you call it the Chris? It's uh, power. And Cassatria, I think a power. Okay, nice. Oh, look at this cute little suitcase of threads. Setting up the sewing Enter. shop. Um, so something that's what I really love about this story is Ibu Nuri and I met on Facebook through an arts and cultural um, group. No. Indonesian arts and culture group and we connected around my excitement around this traditional Indonesian garment the kabaya and if I recall correctly uh, I'm gonna ask you to join me um, if I were if I recall correctly you hadn't you had sewing machines but you had this skill but you hadn't sewn in like how many years was it like 13 years something like that but before that you had like over like how many years of learning, knowing to sew and learning to sew? Oh, when I learning to sew when I was young, maybe when I was 18. And then I uh, took my uh, professional fashion designer around when I was 28. And then I graduated in the Futura Designer School in Jakarta, Indonesia. Right. Yeah, so it's really exciting that through the work of so promo and in this Baltimore now called Baltimore Innovation Center that there's this community of stitchers and the needle trades and various forms of them right like the kabaya is a cultural garment um, but it's still cut sewn and put together by a person so that person then is creating that skill and keeping it breathing new life into this industry so I love how Baltimore's um, needle trades um, is really evolving we're going to take a little peek over the wall where George is setting up his space. Um, he's actually moved into this space and it's a little micro manufacturing spot. So we look forward to coming back and seeing the evolution of this work and also seeing Mr. Hardy 
starting to make his own kabayas. This is the third floor of the Baltimore Innovation Center, and this furniture might look familiar. Um, some of this is on loan, most of it is on loan from Sobromo um, for the Cinelab. So as you remember, these were our sewing desks, but they actually were kind of shaky for sewing, so now we're using the cutting table. Um, this is a space for the Maryland Institute College of Art. Called through the Radcliffe Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. So the intention behind this space is to get entrepreneurs um, to take their ideas straight into launch. So implementation to iteration to innovation. So that's why it's called the Creative Entrepreneurship and Innovation Lab. So often we spend so much time making these long plans that don't really work, where the intention is, okay, whatever resources you have now, put it into practice and then watch and repeat and iterate, change it and see what really works. We just finished a brainstorm this morning, actually most of the day, um, for the Society for Arts Entrepreneurship Education. My colleague who's giving the presentation with me said that even though this looks a bit like madness, um, because we brainstormed and created this system and conversation, this is what we will be conveying in a very coherent way. I'm gonna run off because I'm about to head over to the Johns Hopkins Social Innovation Lab and work on my own venture uh, as we come close to the showcase. Um, I, will, I will include some photos and yeah, I'm gonna include some photos from the recent Upstart Venture Competition. Um, as you know, I was preparing quite a lot, so we awarded up to, uh, we awarded over $105,000 um, through the Maryland State College of Art, Radcliffe Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. And so we have various creative ventures that are now going into um, implementation of their ideas, utilizing that seed funding. So really excited to take you along. The So Bromo, Elsa Fitzgerald, and now Maryland State College of Art journey through impact-driven entrepreneurship through the arts. See you next time.